Can you tell us a bit more about the Caribbean's vulnerability to climate change and the need to build resilience? Um, in the discussions today, um, we highlighted the fact that Caribbean member states are only responsible for between 0.11 and 0.19% of global carbon emissions. But yet we are on the sharp end of the impact of climate vulnerability, climate change, in, in that we are vulnerable to, to rising sea levels. We are vulnerable to floods and droughts, hurricanes, which are increasing in, in intensity, and coral bleaching, just to see a, 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 a few. So ECLAC has done some analysis. Let's see, using data from 19... 70 to 90 to 2017 sorry and we have found that if we compare all sub-regions of the world and particularly SID sub-regions that uh, climate related natural disasters are more frequent in the in in the caribbean and are more costly with respect to damage and losses like for instance um, if we just look at four Caribbean economies for which ECLAC did damage and loss um, assessment for the 2070 hurricane season, so let's look at Antigua and Barbuda, Dominica, St. Kitts, um, and Neve, St. Kitts and Nevis and Bahamas, the damage and losses was est est estimated to be over 1.7 billion, that's close to 2 billion. We've estimated from our analysis that by 2025, the Caribbean region, and this includes Suriname and, and Guyana and Belize, um, the mainland Caribbean economies, we expect the damage and losses attendant to climate-related weather events to be as high as 11 billion a year. Um, and and that, is not, that is not insignificant. Um, bearing in mind that we are not the, the, the major emitters or minor, minor emitters. And I think it, from a policy perspective, and from a, a financing perspective, um, there needs to be interventions by the international development community, our international development partners, uh, by the, the, the Annex One countries, um, in terms of providing the, the, the necessary finance for us to address our climate adaptation and mit mitigation um, initiatives. The debt to GDP ratio, or the debt burden of, of, of the Caribbean, now is estimated at just under 85% of GDP. Um, 13 out of the 15 Caribbean economies now have uh, unsustainably high debt levels, above 60% of GDP. We, there have been a lot of promises coming out of the, the COP, COP26 and, and, and moving forward with respect to providing um, climate financing to address building climate resilience for developing economies. That, that was estimated at 100 million a year. There, there are agencies like the, the, the Green Climate Fund, which provide climate financing. And it's clear that the Caribbean member states has not benefited in any meaningful way from the, from the financing available. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, there, there's this metric of GNI per capita, which seeks to, to determine your access um, to, to concessional financing. And um, that essentially locks out a lot of Caribbean member states who are exceedingly vulnerable, but considered to be high-income economies. When we're not considering other metrics like the level of unemployment, the other level of youth unemployment, the level of growth in the region, which averaged 0% between 2009 and 2020. And I think by we having this discussion about developing a multi a multi um, variable index um, which can allow um, a, a broader use of, of issues of vulnerability to determine the access to financing. And why is access to concessional financing? If we are borrowing monies at a at interest rates that are higher than the rates at which we grow, our debt burden continues to rise and becomes unsustainable. 
what was, why, why should the debt burden be concerned? We're looking at Caribbean member states paying on average 25% of all their revenue to service debt, for debt servicing costs, and as high as 77% in Antigua and Barbuda, 40% in, 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 in Jamaica, and relatively high in Suriname as well. So member states have very little fiscal space in order to, to fund the development and the resilience building and recovery efforts in, in the face of, of COVID. Okay, and uh, what is ICLAC's proposal for the Caribbean's need to build resilience? Um, our signature um, mechanism, initiative, is the development of a Caribbean Resilience Fund, which can leverage um, affordable finance from a multiplicity of sources, which we can then pool together and make available at lower interest rates to member states. And when we're looking at building resilience, this, our resilience challenge in the Caribbean has two, is multifaceted, it has two dimensions. Your climate, your climate, climate resilience. I mean, Suriname and Guyana will understand your sea walls, your, 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 your vulnerability to, to, to floodings, being, uh, being below um, sea level. And those are, those are key issues that you all grapple with um, every, every day. So we need to address how, how you can build your resilience. Um, sea walls, in, in, um, climate, climate resilient um, inf infrastructure and, and, and the like, which again, you'll have to borrow very, at very high interest rates. There's also about economic resilience. The fact that when a criminal economy like Suriname is affected by external shock, let's say the pandemic and the economic impact of the pandemic, the global financial crisis, the impact of the Ukraine-Russia conflict in Europe on prices, it has a negative impact on the economy with respect to productivity, competitiveness and growth. And you need to then determine how best you are going to diversify your, your, your economy from moving away from a dependence on maybe agriculture to certain extent, um, uh, tourism and some forms of like, like manufacturing to build that economic resilience. So when, when, when one sector may be affected by, by soft prices or demands, you have other sectors which can create that delicate balance and ensure um, uh, economic growth, but not just economic growth, but development and, and, and increasing welfare, um, youth, generate youth employment, um, and, and, and increasing incomes and consumption, which are all drivers of growth, and ensuring that the numbers of people that, that, uh, that within or below the, the poverty line, they are, brought, they are giving a, 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 a decent, decent wage. Um, and these are the key issues. These are the issues of vulnerability that they think that the Caribbean Resilience Fund can address by looking at key sectors and helping Caribbean economies like Suriname diversify the economy. Okay. Um, what exactly is the Caribbean Resilience Fund? Can you explain it let, to people who don't really understand what it's about? For, for us, it's a, a, a new mechanism which can provide broad-based financing at lower interest rates or even grants to fund activities that the private banking sector may be reluctant to, 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 to fund, um, that the international community, the IMF, World Bank, um, the bond markets, which are usually high interest, um, may be reluctant to enter. And that even if you were to, to, to solicit or financing from the bond markets, these are higher interest rates. So we, we are trying to find a, a, a mechanism that makes concessional resources and even grants in some instance available to both the public and private sector to help build um, the, the, the Surinamese economy and other Caribbean economies in general. Okay. How can the Caribbean Resilience Fund assist the Caribbean? I think from, from two perspectives. We 
there's, there are two elements. So let's look at the second element. You cannot address your economic development if the you don't have that fiscal space, that 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 liquidity within the system to be able to invest. Now, with, with high levels of debt, and you know, um, Suriname, along with some other economies, the debt has been creeping upwards um, as as uh, funding for the health system and, and for during the pandemic had to increase. And then some of that, some of that funding came from borrowing. What, what we're hoping to do to one element of debt restructuring, reducing debt, is to look, looking at this Suriname's um, debt structure. I guess while you, while you spend the next few years trying to monetize your, your um, oil, oil resources, mm -hmm. all the natural gas resources, if we can find a way to reduce the cost of your debt, like for instance, look at your debt structure, look at the high interest, short-term debt that this government, previous governments were forced um, uh, to, to access, and swap that out for lower interest uh, debt. Um, so it's really, it's really reprofiling a longer term maybe using green bonds um, over 20 years, five-year moratorium, smaller interest rate. What you would find is if you were on a certain chunk of, of your debt, you're paying, let's say, 100 million US in debt servicing payments. Through this debt reprofiling, because we're trying to assess um, concessional resources, you would find that you may be able to make 50 million dollars in servicing it's saving just on debt servicing. What you can do with that, you can invest half of that into greening your economy and building your climate resilience and looking at green sectors in excess between tourism and, and agriculture, looking at some form of moving up the value chain into manufacturing, um, looking at your water management, energy transition to, to really diversify your energy portfolio mix to bring generally the energy costs down and so we see that nexus between growth debt and fiscal space and we're hoping that that element of the caribbean resilience fund which seeks to address the high debt and high debt servicing costs can free up that that liquidity and fiscal space to allow the government and the people of Suriname um, to that that flexibility um, to develop their economy in, 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 in a rather coherent, cohesive, cohesive manner. Okay. Is there anything that you would like to add that I haven't asked you in a question that you think that we should know about? Well, what I can see is that we, we started off addressing the developing the Caribbean Resilience Fund and, and the debt window, because essentially it has two windows, mm -hmm. one for economic transformation, and one for debt. We started off just looking at three economies, St. Kitts and Neve pilot country, um, St. Kitts and St. Lucia, Antigua and Barbuda, and St. Vincent. Subsequently, we have started to engage Jamaica, Suriname, um, uh, to a larger, to a less, and Belize to a lesser extent. We're hoping to have a deeper discussion with the Minister of Finance. Um, to see how we can crowd in Suriname in the first, the first tranche of economies mm -hmm. and how we can discuss a, a broad discussion of its inclusion in the Caribbean Resilience Fund and also the debt reprofiling. Um, I would imagine there are some numbers we're looking at, but I can tell you these aren't insignificant numbers. And if negotiated, and I think we can get this, do, this deal done, within six months, the, the, the government should have a lot of fiscal space to engage in real infrastructural development um, and, and social safety nets while, while they are attempting to monetize um, the oil reserves. And I think that delicate balance of, of, of policy positions is crucial for, for Suriname moving forward. And I've, I've got an impression from our initial the discussions that, that the government has um, an, an, an interest 
in engaging in ECLAC in this regard. Okay.